Hi guys, and welcome back to What If Goku Was In Naruto. First off, I want to say thank you for the support this last part got. I really appreciate it. Another thing I want to say is that for people who might be wondering the powers of the Saiyan clan, it will be revealed slowly as time goes on. However, there might be a bit of a big lore dump in this part. You will have to watch and see. Um, that being said, I also want to say something which I hate saying in most of my videos. Not because it matters to me, but just because I need to start saying it because I'm supposed to say it and that is please leave a like and subscribe if you like my content uh, it lets me know you want to see more sh stuff like this and it makes my day a bit better every time someone new joins leaves a nice comment or likes it's just a nice little thing but now that I hate myself for saying all of this let's get going we join our ninjas inside the classroom the day that their teams are being decided everyone in the class sits hearing names called out Goku and Naruto are sat in anticipation. They pray that they're on the same team together. And slowly, as their classmates are called out, one by one, group by group, eventually leaving the team, which is shouted out, of Team 7 being Naruto, Sasuke, Sakura, and Goku. They're all part of a team, and Goku and Naruto are excited to be on the same squad. Learning that their team number is 7, they sit down and wait for their team leader to be present. As they sit around, they share a few quick looks. Goku and Naruto are obviously ecstatic to be on the same squad together, celebrating together. But Sakura and even Sasuke don't share this excitement. Sakura even glares angrily towards Naruto, less so towards Goku, but he can be annoying when it comes to defending his brother. But she looks lovingly towards Sasuke, who truthfully doesn't care whose team he's on. But he shares a quick look with Naruto and Goku, Two people he would consider some of the most impressive competition he's got. Naruto and Sasuke share a more fierce and understanding look, while Goku and Sasuke's is more of hatred and anger. The two really don't see eye to eye, and that's great for Naruto, meaning that his two greatest rivals are on this same team with him. Now, the newly founded team wait around a while, like in canon. Kakashi is running late, however here in this timeline, He's 20 minutes later than in canon, but never shares why he's so late. A much more respectful Naruto doesn't set up a prank thanks to Gine raising him, however Goku and Naruto do joke around a little bit. This leads to Kakashi finding the group a bit more boring, however he still wants to give them a chance, so like in canon, he asks the group the same questions. With everyone answering the same apart from Naruto, whose answers only slightly changed, sharing how he likes his mother and brother, but his goal to be Hokage hasn't changed. In fact, he's more motivated than ever with people encouraging him. As for Sasuke, a small change would be he doesn't like people who are too defensive, while giving an angry look towards Goku. And finally, Goku would speak up, as he says, I'm Son Goku. I like food, getting stronger, and my family. I dislike people who treat my family poorly. Giving a bit of a side eye towards Sasuke, before he shakes his head. My dream is, well, I've never really had one, but I guess it would be to become the strongest ninja in the world. As for my hobbies, I like training and helping out at Ichiraku Ramen. Kashi can't help but be reminded of his friend and rival when hearing the boy talk, but then can't help but see his old squad in the others as well. However, he shakes his thought away, sharing with the group how to honestly find them all a bit boring, but he sets up the bell test like in canon. The next day rolls around, and things begin like canon. Team 7 don't eat and arrive on time. Kakashi once again is late and he explains the idea behind the bell test. However here he has three bells explaining the idea that having a team of four will be too much work. So he decided that only having three members would be easier. Whoever can't get a bell is kicked off the squad and will be sent back to the academy. Hearing this, this gets everyone on edge. And once the test begins, Sasuke and Sakura rush off into the woods once again. I think Kakashi was expecting. However, once he looks back towards where the others had left, he sees both Naruto and Goku stood waiting for him. Kakashi turns his attention back towards them. Naruto, having had his ego fed a lot more in this timeline, talks out how himself and his brother will be more than enough to take down the ninja. He'll take two bells for him and his brother, and one bell for Sakura. It'll be an easy day for him. However, Kakashi sees the ego on Naruto, and sees a lot of resolve and level-headedness in Goku. It's clear the ninja is sizing up whether they can actually take Kakashi, 
but he is willing to follow his brother's lead as he takes an odd fighting stance, while Naruto takes the traditional ninja pose and leads in, rushing into the fight. Who follows along behind his brother, and Kakashi, still thinking that he shouldn't have to worry too much, continues to read out make out tactics. Naruto goes in for the first blow, throwing a wild punch towards Kakashi's abdomen, followed by a wild punch towards Kakashi's stomach, but the man easily dodges the attacks, but can't help but be impressed by the speed. But while having this fall, Goku leapfrogs over his brother, throwing a punch directly towards Kakashi's face, catching the man completely off guard. He has to quickly drop his book to block the incoming blow. However, the impact from the attack knocks Kakashi backwards a few feet. Kakashi is shocked as his hand stings from this punch. But Naruto and Goku continue their assault. Kakashi now has to get serious as Goku leads the charge. He grabs his brother by the legs and throws him towards Kakashi. Naruto rockets towards the copy ninja. Naruto puts his fingers together, shouting out Shadow Clone Jutsu as five clones appear next to Naruto. The main one leading the charge extends his arm going for a punch towards Kakashi. However, he effortlessly dodges this attack as Naruto goes flying past Kakashi. The White Fang is then attacked by Naruto clones who all start fighting him. This leads to Kakashi having to fight somewhat defensively since each clone is very skilled and putting a bit of a challenge up against Kakashi. However, he efficiently and effectively puts down each clone, surrounding himself with the clone's smoke. But that's when he hears the sound of footsteps rushing towards him, and out bursting through the smoke appears Goku. Gliding along the floor, leg extended, aiming towards Kakashi's, the man has to jump to avoid the attack, which is when he hears Naruto screaming, looking to see Naruto making an attempt at the bells. Kakashi is shocked to see the two make a coordinated attack on this level, but he uses the substitution jutsu to avoid it, leading to Naruto slamming straight into a log head first. Naruto falls to the ground and gets picked up by his brother, who had collected himself off the floor. The pair realise that they are heavily overpowered by Kakashi, and even though they're throwing everything they've got at him, they're hardly keeping up. Meanwhile, Kakashi reappears on the battlefield. Eternally, Kakashi can't help but praise the boys. They are working together so well. Even though they are brothers, this is better levels of synergy than he has ever seen between two siblings. And they're not even related. Alongside that, Kakashi can tell the kids are very well trained and are super good at Taijutsu. Goku is a major threat to him right now, and if that kid's to land a direct hit, it's going to do some serious damage. But he's curious to see how far he can push these kids in this short showing. So, he tells the kids how it was a good attempt, but if they're going to keep moving so slow, they really don't stand a chance against him. This causes Naruto to get angry, causing the number one knuckle-headed ninja to rush towards Kakashi, without thinking, allowing Kakashi to trip him up and throw him into the woods, making it a one-on-one -on -one fight. Kakashi is curious to see how Goku will handle a superior opponent, and the Saiyan clan member shakes with a little bit of fear, but mostly excitement, as he rushes in, jumping into the air, and doing a spinning kick, delivering a powerful blow towards Kakashi. The copy ninja manages to avoid the attack, as Goku crashes into the ground and creates a sizeable crater. Goku turns to see Kakashi moving back towards the river, decides to use a bit of a surprise attack, throwing kunai directly towards Kakashi's feet. The ninja has to jump backwards, going onto the river, activating his water walking ability. Goku jumps up into the air, jumping straight towards Kakashi, throwing out a massive punch. Kakashi manages to avoid this, expecting Goku to just sink into the water, however the boy manages to stand, however it is very shaky and he's losing his footing quite fast. As he quickly goes to at least throw a punch, Kakashi manages to block it, but he is once again sent skidding across the water, as Goku then finally falls into the river. Kakashi is impressed that the boy managed to do that for so long and is now curious to see how much more these kids can do. As Goku pulls himself out of the river, Kakashi and him start fighting once again, and while Kakashi is now fighting seriously, Goku can tell he hardly stands a chance, never really landing a blow as Kakashi keeps him busy, holding him at bay. Over in the forest, Naruto pulls himself up and sees what's happening with his brother, and then sees Sasuke watching from the tree line. Wondering what he's doing, he tells Sasuke to stop being a coward, and if all three of them were to work together, they could overpower Kakashi easily. It would allow them to get the bells and win, but Sasuke ignores this, telling Naruto to go back and help his brother. The boy angrily tuts, rushing back in, going in for a sneak attack against Kakashi, but the ninja easily dodges, making Naruto crash into Goku, hurting each other a little bit. The two brothers pick themselves up, and now are getting quite a bit tired, they're not used to fighting for this long. Normally they just overpower their opponents, but they're willing to keep fighting, something Kakashi finds quite admirable. Now, while this is happening, Sasuke has been trying to figure out a weakness in Kakashi's battle style. He's been scanning him up and down, looking for an opening. 
and once Kakashi starts fighting the two brothers once again, he finally sees it. Without wasting a second, he throws Kunai's directly towards Kakashi's head, causing the man to dodge backwards briefly as Sasuke rushes out from the tree line, making a beeline straight towards the bells. Kakashi is surprised to see this coming, Naruto and Goku deciding to capitalise on this moment, go in for the bells as well, thinking that at least one of them can grab them. And as all three slowly get closer towards the bells, Kakashi uses the substitution jutsu once again to escape from it. However, he can't help but be impressed that they had somewhat pulled off an uncoordinated attack. He's really interested in these kids now and can't help but be excited to see what they do. With Sasuke now exposed, he decides that he will fight Kakashi alone and get the bells by himself. But this just leads to Goku berating him, telling him that himself and Naruto are both better at taijutsu than him and they didn't get the bells, so why would he be able to? All this does is cause a vein to pop on Sasuke's head before he turns to fight Kakashi, annoyed and enraged. This interaction goes a lot like canon, however, with Kakashi more on edge, Sasuke doesn't get close to getting the bells, and now realises that Naruto was right, and they might have to work together. So, while in the fight with Kakashi, he shares a nod with his rival, and Naruto understands Sasuke is now on board with working together. Naruto tells his brother to follow his lead, and a confused Goku follows along behind his brother. The two rush in to fight. Naruto summons a large amount of clones to keep Kakashi busy, while himself, Sasuke, and Goku all come up with a plan, eventually agreeing on something, as the clones are defeated by Kakashi. He watches in interest to see what the boys will do. Before Goku and Naruto rush towards him once again, Kakashi watches them, before the pair split off to the left and right of him, now running anti-clockwise and counterclockwise alongside him. As he watches them, he's not sure who to keep his attention on, and eventually his eyes naturally follow Goku, the bigger threat, as eventually the sound of now is shouted, and suddenly Goku and Naruto start rocketing in towards Kakashi from the left and right, while Sasuke throws a set of kunai towards the man. Kakashi, not sure what to do, analyses everything, and quickly ducks below the kunai before standing back up straight and extending his arms to catch both Naruto and Goku's punches, this grabbing them by the fist and keeping them in place. However, instead of struggling to break free, both boys just smile, clamping their free arms around Kakashi's arm and placing themselves on the ground in a sturdy pose, making sure that Kakashi can't move. This confuses the copy ninja, as he then sees Sasuke rocketing towards him, now understanding that this was all part of their plan and he can't help but be impressed a little bit. As Sasuke gets closer and closer, inches away from the bell, Kakashi manages to break free just enough to trip Sasuke up and pin him down using his free foot, leading to all three being caught in Kakashi's grasp. The man is impressed and is about to share how they all won. However, the sound of a kunai cutting through threads is heard, and then the sound of bells gently landing in someone's hand is also heard. Kakashi looks behind him to see Sakura and a Naruto clone had thrown kunais to cut the bell thread from the tree line, and then... Looking down, he sees that they had landed directly into Sasuke's hand. The man smiles brightly under his mask before letting everyone free and gathering them around. He hears their plan of, of making it so he can't move, allowing Sakura to cut the thread, someone he might have forgotten about. They use the distraction of Goku running to the right of him and allowing Naruto to send the clone off into the woods to get Sakura so she could cut the threads when everything was in place. And once it was all ready, the plan worked successfully. Kakashi smiles brightly. As the group look glum, Kashi realises that they all think that someone's going home, but he smiles brightly and announces how everyone will be staying on this team and he can't wait to work with them in the future. This causes the team to cheer out in victory, as Kashi feels a great sense of pride in his team. But then he gets serious looking at Goku. We cut back to the other day, before Kashi had arrived to meet everyone in the squad. In, he's in a meeting with Lord Third and Gine. The woman learns that Kashi will be her son's teacher, to hold a chance at training not only a Jinchuriki, an Uchiha, and a Saiyan, she needs to give him any information she can on the two boys she has been raising. Yuni explains how she doesn't know much about Naruto's Jinchuriki status, other than he has an enormous amount of chakra, it's an unreal amount for a boy his age, and he really struggles with chakra control because of it. She's taught him to wall walk to try and counteract it, but it's only done so much, and she hopes Kakashi can do some better training than she could. The man nods his head, saying how he will try his best, and then he, she gets onto the subject of Goku. She explains how she has told her son very little about his heritage. All he knows is that Goku was not his first name, 
and he knows a small bit about his father and a little bit about the clan culture. However, he doesn't know he's a Saiyan. She's been planning on telling him for a while, but hasn't worked up the nerve yet. She wants him to lead a somewhat normal life before that affects him. So for now, she's been making out like his abilities come from his son family clan. But for now, it's going to stay like that. He knows a little bit about the abilities and powers he should expect to come, but very little. Mikashi understands and asks Ine what powers he should expect to be seeing coming. After all, he's expected to train them, so he needs to know everything he can. Gina explains as much as she can, going into great detail about all the abilities of the Saiyans. And we cut back to the present time, where Kakashi looks at his palms, where he caught Goku's punch. Realising now that when Gine said Saiyans have monstrous strength without naturally trying, she meant it. But before Kakashi's mind can drift too far back to that conversation, the sound of Naruto and Goku cheering aloud once again snaps him back to reality. The two boys ask if they're dismissed for the day, with Kakashi nodding along, telling them to meet him back here tomorrow. The boys run off, shouting how they're going to celebrate with an Ichiraku ramen. As they disappear off into night and head back to go see their mother, Gine is ecstatic to hear how well they did, and they celebrate throughout the night, and it's just a nice general good time in the Sun family household. As the next day comes around, we see the new team formed, having their pitch taken, and they start doing some training, and light-hearted mission. In this timeline with Goku here, his Saiyan blood would seek for a mentor, someone who could teach him how to do everything he's always dreamed of being able to do, and this means that Kakashi can't get away with slacking off. He has to start training up his team much earlier thanks to Goku pushing really hard, and this leads to him having to teach them pretty interesting techniques. Of course he goes to teach them wall walking but is impressed to see both Naruto and Goku can do it, or at least he makes out like he's surprised having already been warned by Gine that the boys can do it. So with them having already mastered this he decides to teach them water walking even though it seems that Goku and Naruto have already started to practice this. While Sasuke has to try and catch up with both of them, Sakura actually blitz through both of these techniques, learning them within the span of a few hours, as she then starts to slack off a bit, something which rubs Goku the wrong way, but for now he's caught up in his own training and doesn't think too much of it. It doesn't take long for the group to master these abilities, and once this is done, Kakashi has to come up with a new way to train the group. While he brainstorms idea, Goku and Naruto catch wind of the fact Sasuke can use the fireball jutsu, catching him doing it during a little bit of a training session, just to warm up for the day, and once they see him do that, they want to learn something just like it, so they start to beg Kakashi to teach them something cool like that. Sasuke finds it a bit annoying, however, he does think that learning a new jutsu would help him, while Sakura is completely indifferent. Kakashi, after thinking it over for a few seconds, decides that it might not be a terrible idea, so he collects the paper for the test, as he tests out Goku, Sakura's and Naruto's elements. So he places each elemental paper in one of their hands. Sakura gets Yin. By the way, I'm not 100% sure if this is right, but I can't find any official statement of what Sakura's element is. I know she can use Earth style, but legit everyone can in the series because of that Bijou bomb scene with the mud walls, so I didn't really want to give her that element. So I went with one that I believe suits her best in Yin. Thanks to her being gifted with Genjutsu and just charcoal control in general, and Yin is very heavily associated with Genjutsu. Overall, this is just how I thought it worked best, but if anyone knows something different, please allow me to know, and I would love to change it and fix my problem. Naruto gets wind release like normal. As for Goku, something very strange happens with him. He holds the paper and it quickly wrinkles, letting Kakashi know he's a lightning user, like himself. However, the paper soon sets alight as well, causing everyone to be confused, since that also indicates fire release. With everyone caught off guard, Kakashi isn't sure what's going on. He doesn't have any idea and has never seen anything quite like it. Does this indicate that the boy can use both fire and lightning release? Kakashi isn't 100% sure, however for now he plans to drop it. He'll do some digging in a bit and try and figure it out in his own time. But, from the looks of things, the boy can use two elements, and he's going to teach him the lightning one. Means he has a bit more diversity on his squad, while also having an easier time teaching him a jutsu. Now having an idea of everyone's elements, he tells the group to meet him the next day. He has to have a bit of time to plan out what jutsu would work well for all of them. So everyone heads home for the day, as people just have a nice relaxing night. In the Sun family house, Goku's still confused about what happened. So like any kid who's confused, he goes to his mother, asking her what she thinks about it all, explaining the entire situation. But this just causes Gine to stop and look at her son shocked. She kneels down and explains that she doesn't really know much about all of this, however his father 
had the very same thing happen to him when he was a very young boy, and it granted him amazing abilities, and hearing this, Goku's eyes sparkle with excitement. Asking how he developed it, and Gine apologises for not knowing, but trusts her son will figure it out. Naruto hearing this is jealous, wanting to have a cool power develop, causing Gine to chuckle a little bit as she points at the boy's belly, causing Naruto to pout that the fox isn't one for talking, and Gine kneels down, placing her hand on his shoulders, telling him that he'll figure it out, she knows he will. Something I haven't brought up is that Naruto's Jinjuriki status is known by the Sun family, so it's safer for them to know about it, and Lord Third is good friends with Gine, so I wanted to warn the woman. But Goku and Naruto don't know about Goku's Saiyan heritage, since Gine fears Goku searching for more information of the clan, which could lead to him being seeked out by the people which killed them all. But like stated earlier, Goku does know some of his clan's abilities. Things like his natural super strength, having a good sense of smell, which can rival Kiba on some good days, and a tail which grants him great abilities. But that's the extent of what he knows, and Gine is hiding a very big detail, which she even fears herself. A day goes by, and Team 7 goes to a training ground, where they find Kakashi reading in his tree, with four clones stood at the weight. As Kakashi, the real one, sees his team approach, he jumps down from the tree, and explains. How each clone has been assigned a student, with the student having already had their jutsu hand-picked for them, with Kakashi thinking he's found one which will benefit them all greatly. So they are to listen to their assigned clones, and if they run across any issues, he will come to help. However, for now, he plans on reading. With the man finishing this, he jumps back into the tree and opens his book, as each clone takes their assigned student, beginning their training. At first, Kakashi finds himself reading his book, but then watches the students train. He wants to learn more about their strengths and weaknesses, and learn a few things else. For Sasuke, he can tell that the boy is naturally talented, but he has issues working with people and can't handle when people are better than him. Having seen the way Sasuke looks when Goku is training in Taijutsu, and it's a look of envy and anger. Kakashi plans to beat this out of him though, but for now, he believes that the motivation it will give him is plenty good enough. As for Goku, he has issues when it comes to learning ninjutsu, but more importantly, he has issues when it comes to working with his other team members apart from his brother. Goku is a kind kid and caring, but it seems that thanks to the way people treat his brother, he's not willing to trust many of them. More importantly, he does not get along well with Sasuke, which is going to cause some issues down the future. However, the kid is highly skilled in terms of physical abilities and his taijutsu skills. Looking over to Naruto, he starts to think about his flaws and benefits. Thinking how the kid has a large pool of chakra, amazing stamina, and a great attitude when it comes to training and just being a ninja. But he has terrible chakra control, and his ego is way too big for someone of his skill level. It will cause issues in the future. Finally, Sakura. Kakashi can tell she's got the makings of a great Konoichi, but the girl is too lazy. She's not willing to give it her all in training, which has caused her to fall even further behind the others, and she was the weakest member to begin with. She also refuses to train alongside Goku or Naruto, limiting her training options even more, which is going to cause her immense problems later down the line. But for now, having figured out most of their flaws, he plans to beat them out of them as they grow stronger and older. But for now, learning these jutsus will be beneficial and also help them tick some goals off. As he looks away back to his book, he decides to rest a little bit. He actually had to learn two of the jutsus last night, and in return for learning these jutsus, he now owes Asuma a massive favour, which he knows is going to bite him in the ass later down the line. But for now, he's just happy his students have got something to learn. And as time goes on, his students are picking it up very quick, and the jutsus they've learnt will be revealed as time goes on. With time passing, the group grows stronger, while also doing some low-level missions. But doing these low-level missions makes both Naruto and Goku really bored. The pair want to do something more interesting. They want to leave the village, fight some bad guys, and they complain to their mother about it, causing the woman to give them an idea to ask Kakashi and the others nicely if they would be okay with doing a harder mission. The pair hearing this think this is a good idea, so when the next day rolls around and Team 7 meets up, they pitch the idea towards the group. The only people they really want to convince is Kakashi, and after hearing it out for a few seconds, Kakashi thinks it over, realises that this god is very skilled, and would perform well on a harder mission, so uh, agrees. The leader of Team 7 asks Lord Third for a C rank mission, in escorting Tenzin back to the Land of Waves, like normal. With the group getting assigned a mission, like in canon, they pack and head off. Gine, having caught news that her sons were leaving the village, actually rushes over to the gates to wish them luck and give each of them a hug, before she asks Kakashi to watch over them. The man chuckles, explaining how the mission should be easy, so it'll be fine. However, this causes Tenzin to look away in a bit of shame. Some think Sasuke and Sakura see, but 
don't think too much of it, thinking he just feels bad for making them leave the village. With them heading off, Gine can't help but worry about whoever took her husband's life might be out there and do the same to her son. But she decides to distract herself with work and even does a light workout just to keep in shape. Out on the road, Team 7 makes good progress on the trip to the Land of Waves. However, when the team walk past two puddles, Kashi and Sasuke can't help but find them suspicious. However, another member in the squad can tell there's something off as Goku walks by and he can smell the smell of stained blood and two people he's never smelt before in his life. The boys put an edge immediately and start scanning the nearby environment around him in hopes to figure out what it is, hoping it might just be a bear. So, when the two demon brothers attack, Kakashi doesn't even have to move, as Sasuke and an on-guard Goku both spring into action, Goku quickly grabbing Gozu's arm and blocking an attack that was thrown towards him, and then throwing the man into a nearby tree before jumping towards him and ramming his fist directly into Gozu's face, knocking him out, while Sasuke, with a lot of skill in class, swiftly deals with Mizu, while Naruto and Sakura are frozen in fear. However, now the adrenaline of the moment has died down, Goku is stopped and horrified, not only at the thought of how close he was to death, but this new adrenaline feeling in his body of pure excitement, as if his blood boiled at the thought of a fight to the death. The kid can feel his tail standing on edge, and a small note here is no one knows of Goku's tail apart from Naruto and Kakashi. As the group catch their breath, Sasuke taunts Naruto while Kakashi checks on Goku, seeing how the boy is clearly a bit shaken. Goku tells the sensei he's fine, he was just caught off guard, while Naruto does the same move of stabbing his hand and declaring how he won't ever be a coward again, causing Goku to rush over and help his brother, while Sakura supplies a bit of medical attention, causing Naruto to get scolded by his older brother. Things here play out like canon for a while, but even the fight between Kakashi and Zabuza goes mostly normal, up until the moment Kakashi is captured. With a much more competent Team 7, they get to saving their sensei straight away. The three boys rush towards Zabuza's clone, with Goku taking the lead. He stops a few metres away from Zabuza and shouts out for Leapfrog, as Goku drops down to one knee and Naruto jumps onto his back and into the air, causing the boy to get some good height and still be airborne above Zabuza. He puts his fingers together and summons a large amount of clones, which all begin to airdrop down towards the Demon of the Mist. Zabuza seeing this is impressed, however, can deal with the ball in one big swoop. Grabbing Kiribocho, he swings the sword straight towards the clones, destroying all of them above him, only leaving the real Naruto, who had to block the attack with a kunai, however, blocking it sent him flying into the nearby tree line, completely out of sight. This allows Zabuza to turn his attention back towards the two other boys, who are now running towards him, both going for a stab in at his chest. But the Demon of the Mist sees this, and the two boys coming straight towards him. So, he slams the Kiribocho into the ground in front of Sasuke, causing the ninja to have to stop his assault, while allowing Goku to continue his own, as he runs headfirst into battle. Uh, but, the Demon of the Mist doesn't give the boy a chance, as he spins his whole body round and slams his foot into the boy's face, causing the boy to go flying backwards and slamming into a tree. Zabuza can't help but be impressed, as he sees the other two boys from a second ago, now running back towards him. As he turns to go fight them, he sees the blonde-haired one in Naruto running through a bunch of hand signs before shouting out, Wind Release, Air Bullet Jutsu. As a huge bullet of air rockets out of Naruto's mouth, huge in size and fast in speed. Zabuz is taken aback by the basic jutsu being so powerful, causing him to have to grab the executioner's blade to block the attack, allowing the clone to not take any damage, but also letting both Goku and Sasuke rush past him and straight onto the water, heading towards the real Zabuzu. Goku throws two kunai and some shuriken straight towards the real Zabuzu, but the man is easily able to dodge this, jumping into the air to avoid the attack, but this just causes Sasuke to smirk cockily as he readies his shuriken and kunai, throwing them straight towards Zabuzu who can no longer dodge while in the air, with all of the kunai and shuriken heading straight towards Zabuzu's head, and in a split second decision, the man drops the water prism to defend his head from getting pierced by a kunai, allowing Kakashi to escape and allowing this part of the battle to continue much like normal. Once over, Kakashi comes out quite injured, but once again he's amazed by his student's performance and praises Naruto, Sasuke and Goku for how well they performed, even giving some praise to Sakura who stood by and defended their client. Now with Kakashi injured, the group do need to stop and rest, allowing the man to get some of his energy back. And here, Kakashi tells his students to work on their teamwork, pointing out how well they work together during the fight, but this is just met with an annoyed sigh from Sasuke, audible moans from Sakura and Goku, and Naruto not really bothered. 
Naruto here has a much better relationship with Sasuke in this timeline, thanks to him being more worthy of being Sasuke's rival, meaning their relationship is a lot further along than it would be. If you want a comparison, it would probably be like their counterparts from the Chunin exams. The two can work together and aren't afraid to tease one another, while still being rivals. And in this timeline, Naruto still has his crush on Sakura, so he's willing to play with everyone, but everyone else isn't really all for this, and disagrees. Kakashi annoyed recommends that they all practice the jutsus he has been teaching them instead, and the group are more inclined to do this, heading off to do their own training. But for now this is where I'm going to leave this part. Sorry not a lot happens in this part, and sorry I don't reveal all the jutsus and stuff. I think it just makes sense and adds a bit more fun to it all, since you get to watch it from the perspective of an outsider of someone who never gets to see this sort of shit. I hope people are enjoying this series and sorry about the big break between the first part and the second part, but this is actually a rewrite of the second part because I didn't like the first script, blah 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 blah. Anyway, I hope people enjoyed, I hope you all have a great day or a good night, and hopefully I'll see you next time.